Hello, lovelies. Welcome to Amy in Melbourne. My name's Amy. Apologies for my voice. This is the best that it's sounded in ages. So it's time to just get a video. Today, we are learning how to crochet using this Myla Leah beanie pattern. I'm going to show you how to measure yourself so that you can make this beanie perfect for you. But originally, it was written for my cousin Izzy. If you already know about crochet and you just want the pattern, head to this timestamp. But the rest of us are going to go over some basics first. Crochet involves using a hook to make loops that interlink with each other to form a fabric. There are so many different kinds of hooks from the absolute tiniest that you can barely see to the biggest that is so huge you can barely hold it. You can actually also just use your hands if you want to. Size itself doesn't technically matter. What matters is that whatever size you pick matches the yarn you're using. There are two basic kinds of crochet hooks. They do the same thing. It doesn't matter. There's inline, which is like this, where it all is one size, or there is tapered where it sort of sticks out a little bit. Tapers is what you'll find most often. I prefer inline, but they're hard to find, so whichever. There's also some basic tools that you're going to need for any crochet project. You should have these laying around your house, probably. I do. But if you don't, you need a set of scissors of some kind, some tapestry needles, and something to mark your stitches. The next thing we need to think about is yarn or wool. If you're in Australia and you call every kind of fibre wool, it comes in every kind of size you can imagine. There's really thin, there's really thick and bulky. It has different names in different places. It doesn't really matter for your first project, certainly. All that matters is that whatever you pick matches your hook size. To work this out, we're going to use the label on the wool. Pattern was written for Brighton Wool from Spotlight. It has a needle suggested size of four millimeters, and it also has a crochet gauge, 22 by 30 rows. This sizing is based on their testing, and it may not be exactly the same as what you do because you will obviously use your hands, your attention, and that's going to be a bit different. You can substitute with a different kind of yarn. This one here would work. There is also wool that you can use because that is, again, four millimeter hook size as a suggestion. You can use all kinds of different kinds as so long as it's got a four millimeter hook suggestion or the tension gauge, which you can see is approximately the same. It doesn't have to be exactly, but approximately. I've even made this beanie out of wool that I've spun myself. It is incredibly inconsistent. It just matters that you get, you understand how big your stitches are going to be and how big your fabric will be based on those stitches. So once we get to the calculations, you'll be able to use any wool that you have available to you. This is where people will suggest that you do a swatch or a little practice square. Uh, you don't have to, just as long as you keep remeasuring as you're going to make sure that it's the right size. The next thing everyone wants to know is how to hold your hook. So you can have an overhand grip, which is this, or a knife grip, or an underhand, which is a pen grip. That's what I use. It doesn't actually matter. There's also a million other ways that you can hold your crochet hook. It's just whatever is comfortable to, for you. And so long as you are making your fabric, it's all that matters. You'll also want to try and tension it. Some people use their middle finger, their main finger. I use my ring finger to tension mine. And then I let it sort of slip over the top of my main finger whatever works for you in the end. The best way to make sure that your beanie is the right size for you is to measure. So you're going to measure around the crown of your head, the biggest part, whatever the biggest part of your head is, measure around there. And then you're going to measure from your brow or wherever you want the beanie to stop down to the back of your neck or the nape of your neck. We'll help you work out how many stitches you need or how long you want to make it and also how big you want to make it to fit around your head. For example, if I'm calculating this for me, the number of stitches I need is half of that nape to forehead measurement plus the bend. I have a massive head, so that's 57 stitches. As for rows, that is the circumference. Of each of my rows is 1.5 centimetres, and my head is 62 centimetres around, and I need 41 stitches. All you need is your rows and your stitches, and then you can make a hat. So this is the yarn that I'm going to show you with. This, the pattern is originally written for, which is Brighton. It's a cotton acrylic mix, but again, anything that needs a 4 millimetre crochet hook is perfect. You're going to actually start out with a 4.5 five millimeter crochet hook or bigger to do your initial chain row. You're going to start by making a slip. So to do a slip knot, you're going to have a loop and then you're going to take your working yarn, the stuff that's coming out of the ball of wool itself, and you're going to push a loop in through that loop over the top of the X. Then you're going to cinch this down, tighten it, And that will create a loop with a little knot. You can put your hook into the loop. And then again, you can pull on that to tighten it around your hook. You don't want to make it super duper tight. 
just firm. Then you're going to yarn over from the back to the front. And you're going to use the hook to pull that yarn through the loop. And that's your first chain stitch. So again, yarn over from the back to the front and pull through the loop. I like to sort of rotate my hook downwards so that it goes through the bottom of the loop. That makes it easier. It doesn't catch on itself. And you're just going to continue that for however many stitches you need for your size. This is the part where we're going to measure. So again, this is how tall you want your hat to be from the base of your neck or from the front of your forehead to the top of your head, plus whatever you need for that turn up section. So you can either do it in centimeters or in inches. It doesn't matter which one. Just make sure that it matches whatever that half of your head plus the turn up is that you measured earlier. Now we're going to switch to our smaller crochet hook size. Using a larger one on the chain stitch will help your work to not banana or bend as you're making it like this one. You're going to turn your work so that your working yarn is in your dominant hand. And we're going to work from, in my case, right to left, because that's the way my hands work. And then we're going to add two more chain stitches in this smaller size. You're then going to work your first treble stitch. And that's going to be worked into the loop that is three deep. So not the, the two chains you just made, but that third one, the one underneath, your last large size chain. And you're just going to work it into the top of it. If you turn your work over, you'll see that it looks like a chain proper. But if you look at the right side, they'll look like little Vs. You're going to try and get the loop at the top of the V. So yarn over once and then push your hook through top of V. Then you're going to yarn over again and pull that new yarn loop through the bit. You'll have three loops on your hook now. Yarn over again, and you're going to pull that loop through two. Yarn over and pull that through two again. You've just made a treble stitch. So again, yarn over through the top of the V, yarn over, back out. Three loops are on the hook. Yarn over, front to back, through two, yarn over, and through two again. Congratulations, you're doing it. That is exactly what you're supposed to do. So you can now keep going with that until you are five before the end. If you're finding this is plenty, this is plenty hard, you can actually just continue to do trebles for the entire pattern. You don't need to do the half trebles that I'm going to show you next. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference. It's just going to mean that the top of your beanie, the crown, is going to be a little bit fluffier and may sit off your head a little bit and won't cinch down to it as nicely. That's the shaping that it makes a difference for. But in the end, if that's what you need to do, that's your learning, that's totally fine. Go for it. So we're stopping now because we have our five uh, chain stitches that are left before the end. If you make your loop beat and you can just put your work down and you don't have to stress about your stitches falling out, the last five stitches are going to be a half treble stitch, which is incredibly similar to the treble, but actually a little bit easier. So give it a go and see what you think. Everything's going to be held in the same way. You're going to yarn over, go through the top of that V, yarn over and pull it through. So far, it's the same. Yarn over, and then we're going to pull through not just the two, but all three stitches. And that's it. That's a half treble. I know, crazy, so easy. We yarn over, in through the loop, yarn over back out again, yarn over, and pull through all three of your stitches. And you're going to do that for the last five 
of the stitches that you have on your chain. We have now completed our first proper row in the pattern. You can see how it tapers the very end of the, the stitches just at the end there. That will help it shape around the top of your head when you need to cinch it together. You now need to turn your work over so that your working yarn is back in your dominant hand. And we are going to start at the very start there with two chains again. We're again working from right to left if you are right handed with me. So chain high, yarning over and pulling through one. Yarn over and pull through again. This is where it gets a little bit tricky to know where to go. So you've seen you've got those V's. You need to make sure that you're going into the second, so not the one where your chain is worked into the one after that and again you're working only in through back of the v that back loop so yarn over in through the loop yarn over pull it back out we've got three yarn over pull through all three because we're still doing our half trebles and you need to do four half trebles so one of your chain, that chain you did at the start, that counts as a stitch. It's like a pretend stitch, just to make sure that you're up high enough for your other stitches to work. Once you have completed your one or your two chains and then your four half trebles, then you're going to move back to your treble stitches. Again, working in the back loop. So yarn over, through the loop, yarn over, back out. You've got three, yarn over, through two, yarn over through two and you go back to your trebles again and you can continue that all the way to the very end of this row. So now we're just making sure that we are going through just the back of the V. The reason we do this is to make the bump that you see between each of the rows. If I was to go through the entire V, which is a traditional treble stitch, then it would make a flat stitch, which is awesome and not a problem at all, but it just won't look like it's ribbed. So if I go through both, which is a traditional treble stitch, and yarn over, like I would with a treble, through both of those loops, then you can see if I do a few of them, that it ends up being much more of a flat fabric and you don't have that nice ridge running along each of the rows. This is completely fine. If that's what you want to do to make your beanie, then that will look lovely. You can also do a combination, but you can see it does look quite different in terms of the texture of it. So I've got my three flat, and then you can see that ridge. It also looks quite different on the other side where you've got the almost valley that you have between them, those stitches, because of the way that we're doing this. As we're always working in the back, as we flip our work, it will alternate on its own without us having to think about it. If you make a mistake with crochet, it's as easy as just pulling on a thread and it undoes your loops. And then you can fix your mistake or redo it. So we're going to go back again to doing in the back of the loop all of our trebles all the way to the end. Once you have reached the end of the row, it's really important that you make sure that you do a stitch into the previous row's chain, the chain that began that row. If you miss this, then you're going to accidentally decrease your work and your beanie is going to become smaller and smaller. You don't want to do that. So make sure that you actually put that stitch in. It can be a bit difficult. You don't have to just do it in the back loop if that's being a pain. It's not going to make that much difference it being one stitch. So now that we've finished our first two rows, you can see that it really does taper on that one end. We're going to flip our work over. So we're again working from our dominant hand across. And we're going to do two chains to start the row. 
And then we're going to make sure that we're working into the next V stitch. And we're going to do our trebles because we're on the larger side, so the brim end of our work. And we're going to work towards the crown. When you get five stitches before the end, you're going to swap over to doing your half trebles again. And then it continues on. Just repeat, repeat, repeat until you have a big enough piece of fabric that will go around your head. As you're working, make sure that you keep checking your measurements. Obviously, I know this isn't big enough to go all the way around my head, but just keep getting your tape out or your ruler. Maybe you have your piece of string that's the same size as your head and you just keep measuring against that and going, I, I just need this much more. And as soon as you get to the right size for your head, you're going to stop. For the rest of the tutorial, I'm going to be using a piece that I prepared earlier. So for this section, once you've got all of your rows, your last row needs to end at the brim. So not at the top where you've got your half trebles, it needs to end at the bottom. We are now going to slip stitch our two sides together to create a hat. At this point, the hat is basically becoming a cylinder with an opening at the top and the bottom. Place the two sides of your hat together so the, all of the rows match up. And then you're going to start by pulling your last loop, the big one that's sitting out there, through the bottom, the matching stitch, or the bottom of the other side. It can be through both loops. It can be through one on each side. It just depends on the look that you like. Uh, personally, I like to pull it through uh, one. And then you're going to cinch it. You're going to take your working yarn into your non-dominant hand, push your hook through the next stitch and the matching next stitch on the back side of your work. So not the same one you were just in. And there, stitch across. And then you're going to yarn over and pull it through both, the, both sides of your work. We'll have two loops. And rather than yarning over, you're just going to pull that second loop through the first. So there are no new loops being made, no new stitches. You're just literally stitching this thing together. So again, through the front and the back, yarn over, pull a loop through, and then pull that new loop through the old loop. So you still only have one loop left. And you're just going to continue to do that, pulling the new loop through and then pulling that through the old loop until you get all the way to the top, the crown of your beanie. Now, if you want to get extra fancy, you can stop doing these stitches when you get to the end of your brim, however big you want to make that, and then you can flip your work and pull your yarn through to the other side and continue on the other side. And this will mean that it, you'll create a seamless stitch pattern as your, when your brim turns up. For me and for this beanie that I'm actually doing now, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to show you how, but I'm not going to do this because I don't know the exact size of the child I'm making this for. Uh, he hasn't tried it on, so I don't want to guess and then it looks weird. So you just flip it through and you pull that working yarn through to the other side and then you put your loop on that side. And it works exactly the same way. You're still just doing the same slip stitch. It's just that they will be on one side for the brim and then on the other side of your work for the rest of the hat. So because I don't know the size of the person wearing this, I'm just going to pull all of these stitches off and I'm going to start again. And I'm going to just do it on the one side of the fabric, pulling uh, my stitches through 
and just stitching all the way across doing those slip stitches. Okay, so this is where it gets exciting because we're almost finished. Once you do your final slip stitch, you're going to pull that thread working yarn out long and you're going to take a pair of scissors and you're going to snip it off. Yes, I know, scary. And then you're going to pull that yarn all the way through. So you don't have a loop anymore. You'll have two long dangly ends. Then you're going to need to grab your darning needle and you're going to thread that onto your working yarn so that long one that you just cut that's where you're going to thread it onto rather than using the end of the yarn to push through the hole of the needle actually use the side it's a lot easier to make a little loop and push that through than to try and push through the end next we're going to do some running or basting stitches this is where you just go up and down through your new fabric and it creates a, a, a stitch that can be pulled through. You're not going to pull it tight yet. You're just going to run them in and out all the way around the crown of your bean. Once all of those basting stitches are done, now you can pull your yarn taut to cinch the top of your hat together. Leave the um, needle on the end of your yarn because you're going to need it again. But this is just where you're going to pull this to try and close up that gap. There might still be a little bit of a hole at the center. And to fix this, uh, we're going to do a couple of extra stitches. But first, we're going to take the two tails that we now have at the top there and we're going to do a double knot just to tie it together, hold everything together. So to close up this little hole at the top, you're simply going to take your yarn needle, the yarn on it, and you're going to do some stitches across the hole from one side to the other, back around again. I usually do three or four of these stitches just to sort of cinch together that last little bit and also fill up the hole with a bit of yarn. Again, secure this with a double knot with the first initial tail of your yarn and your working yarn. At this point, technically you are done. You can choose to add a pom-pom if you'd like to, and you can use these tails to attach the pom-pom. A pom-pom will look something like this. If it's storeboard, you can make your own, which is also really fun. And one day I'll be able to find the loop that comes on these pom-poms. Just thought, yeah. Hey, there it is. So they always have these lovely little loops. Usually they are elastic, and I simply just uh, thread my working yarn through there and stitch it to the hat. You can also use a button or... Um, you can use a press stud so that you can have interchangeable pom-poms if you'd like to. For this hat, I'm not actually going to include a pom-pom. Um, it's for a small child who would get very annoyed at the pom-pom. 
So instead, I'm going to just finish off by working my ends through my project, weaving them in. So again, you use that same sort of running stitch to go back and forth in through your stitches down. And then you need to make sure that you skip one on the way back up so that it's looped over something and then run it back up to where it was again. And then you can just simply cut those uh, tails off. I know it seems a little bit anticlimactic, but that is how you finish off weaving in your ends for any of your crochet or yarn projects. Make sure that you do the same thing for your other tail. And then that's actually it. You have completed your thing. You need to work out whichever side is your wrong side or your right side. I'm going to flip mine around and then I'm going to flip up my uh, band at the bottom, my brim, and that's it. That's a little beanie ready to go. Congratulations. If you have been working on this with me, I hope that it's turned out how you want it to and that it looks beautiful and it fits you super well. Make sure that you check out my full blog post about how to measure your head make sure you get the right size. You can also get the pattern from my website. It's linked below as well as somewhere here on the screen. If you find this a little bit difficult, you can also choose to make a little swatch like this, uh, make it a little bit longer and you can actually turn it into an ear warmer. Simply follow the same instructions, but don't worry about cinching it at the top. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial and putting up with my crackly voice. I really, really appreciate it. If you like this, make sure you give it a like and subscribe and do all of those things that you know how to do. And I will see you later. Bye, lovelies.